Sis and tell, sis and tell A whole lot of talk, not a whole lot of nothing Amanda does stand up, Allison's on TV And when they hop on the phone, it's the place you wanna be Sis and tell Hey Allie Hi ma'am, what's up? I think I did a terrible Jewish mother thing. <laughs> mm. That's a lot. That's a lot to handle. Well, I took a couple of the kids grocery shopping last night. This is what happens. They see like recipes on TikTok and then they want to make them, right? right? I made the mistake of sending a recipe video to Ruby at like seven o'clock and then she's like, let's go make this. And I'm like, we don't have any of this stuff. But like, what else were we going to do? It's summertime. So we had a late night excursion to the Kroger and I don't know what the kids are getting and they just throw a bunch of stuff in the grocery cart and I get it and we leave. And Murray bought pork rinds. Oh, yeah. Pretty much on par with that. He bought um, pork chops. Pork no, he chops. Did not. He did. He bought pork chops. He brought it into our Jewish home. And I know I'm hypocritical because I buy bacon, right? But there's not something. The same. Not there's the same. something about pork chops. And he's making pork chops. And Ruby looks at me, and I bet you have the same answer to this question. She looks at me and she goes, <laughs> "What do you even eat with pork chops? Pork chops and applesauce." That's exactly. <laughs> If you watch the Brady Bunch ever, right. you know that's the only answer. That is what I said. And she goes, that's disgusting. And I go, well, I don't even know if that's true. Because <laughs> Peter I, Brady ate it. I don't know if it's true. That's yeah. just what they said on the, the Brady Bunch. And I told, and Aaron's out of town for work. And I told him that. I said the same thing to him. And I said, you know, Ruby asked what the side was. And she go, he goes, applesauce. Applesauce. That's what we all know. But do they eat that? Is that what people eat with pork chops? I don't think so. That's that sounds like a gross combination. It sounds so gross. He well, made spinach. So <laughs> it reminds me of when Abe, when he was little, went to dinner with my um, my in laws, and my father in law said, "You know, it was so funny. Abe insisted on ordering the pork chop." And he said, really? You want the pork? Are you sure? He goes, yes, my mom makes it all the time, and I love it. He goes, your mom makes pork chops all the time? Yes, all the time. And then he got it, and he goes, this isn't a pork chop. And, of course, Charles said, do you mean lamb chop? Exactly. Yeah. And, of course, he meant lamb chop, which I had been making on occasion. And so Abe's like, oh, maybe i'm like you know it's it, you can get the chops confused especially when you're you're a young child it's or even an old person so chop is not a chop not all chops are created equal not all chops are created equal but i do love myself a good bone a bone in meat oh my goodness just take off the meat and give me the bone i will just hold on to that bone for the next two hours so there is a debate going on about this speaking of bone and meat Really? When someone says, I'd like chicken wings, yes, and then the the waitress asks, would you like them bone in or bone out? There's no such thing as bone out. I know. That's but... fake. That's like a chicken McNugget. That's not real chicken. Right? And that's the logical answer. That is not a chicken wing anymore. It is a no. chicken nugget. It is a chicken nugget. Not even a real chicken nugget. That is gross. Well, my friend Dana said she has a problem when people have to specify unsweetened tea because she comes from Chicago and she says all tea is unsweetened. I said, not if you are in the South. In the South, there is sweet and unsweet and you have to specify. But I remember if you go out of the Southeast, it's very, it's very complicated because if they have tea at all, and I'm talking cold tea, not hot tea, but if they have to serve iced tea, it's going to be unsweetened. They don't know what sweet tea is. So we were at a restaurant once and (laughs) Helen said, um, can I have a, an unsweetened iced tea? And the woman goes, okay. So she brings him the iced tea and he says, can I get some, some sweetener on this, some sweet and low or anything that you have? She goes, sir, you ordered it unsweetened. He goes, I know. It's because I like to sweeten it myself. <laughs> and she, she was even more confused. She goes, isn't that the only way to sweeten iced tea? So there, there are these you know, challenges, I think, when you go north to south or even anywhere outside of the south with iced tea. But I also wonder, like, do we even, I'm trying to remember, like, when we order tea as a drink, yeah, 
like, do we even say iced tea? I feel like we just say tea. I'll have tea, oh, yeah. sweet. I'll have a tea. Sweet I'll have a tea. You yeah. don't even have to say iced, right? I mean, I guess no one in their mind would ever think to order a hot tea in the South during the summertime. Anyway, if you just Except say my husband, he drinks hot tea like five times a day. Oh my god, he has an addiction. He does. I just can't with anything hot right now it is too uh, there's a heat wave there's a heat oh. wave going on and they're making us wear pants <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's making you wear pants the world the world makes you wear pants if i could walk around in just a t-shirt i would oh i thought you i thought you meant long pants not just shorts or a skirt or no i just mean bottoms you mean bottoms okay i mean yeah bottom but i'll wear i'll wear skirts the barely skirts barely shorts so Alan, um, Alan got sick last week, and I did feel bad for him. Let me be clear, because he was Wait, sick. That sounds like sometimes you don't feel bad for him. No, I don't. <laughs> no he's, he's a fine. pretty he's a pretty stoic sick person. I will give him that. Okay. Here's the problem: like after day two, it just became inconvenient for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you for two reasons. Number You're one, such a good wife. Oh, well, I know. And I told him that I said I love you, and I'm I do I do love him, and I did feel terrible that he was so sick. But then I added, and it's also very inconvenient for me because he's so darn helpful. You know, I've told you this. He does the laundry. He does the dishes. We had all these friends coming in for July 4th. Oh. He, he, you know, he does a lot. And it's not only the the physical things that he does around the house or where we wherever we are. And just he's just a helpful person. Then I realized that, like, once I sent out a text to the boys saying, you know, daddy's sick, just want to let you know, they directed every text email phone call to me for the next you know 72 hours and it's a lot i mean sounds I, like <laughs> allison sounds like alan is the default parent in your house not no, you it's not that unusual. he's a default parent yeah, i it's, think he is <laughs> no i'm saying usually we get pretty much 50 50 of the questions oh. and i don't know about your kids but they sort of have they they sort of self-categorize where their needs in terms of who can answer a question quicker than the other. Arthur tends to ask both of us at the same time and see who responds first. Abe definitely has like certain questions he'll ask me, certain questions he'll ask Alan. And then if he cannot get one of us, he'll get the other. But usually Levi is just, he'll pretty much come to me. But, <laughs> but this was everything. And I'm, this is not big, important questions. But right. it just made me realize that like, I don't want to, I don't want to answer all these questions. It, it gave me a lot of, you, you know, that, that was 72 hours. Mom. It a gave me a lot mom. of respect for single parents because yeah. that's it. And I realized, you know, I have a friend. And those were just text messages. Those, <laughs> are just, those are just three days of text messages. Let, let's just be clear. Your kids are not even in the house and they're all over 18. No, they're all grown ass men and they're right. still, still, and they're very responsible and there's still a lot. That was a lot of pressure. Oh, no, so Allison. I have a friend who's a single mom. <laughs> and and I just remember, like, she is like, one of the strongest women I know. She has a, a son and a daughter who are both out of high school now. And, um, and she used to say, right, like, everything she would try to explain it that way and she was not, you know, a martyr. She was ne she would never complain. But she also was very honest about about the the and I don't want to say burden, about the load of that responsibility, right? Yeah. That the buck stops with her. She had an incredibly supportive extended family. She's very close with her siblings, her parents. She works in a family business, right? Like she has family surrounding her all the time. But at the end of the day, it stops with her. It, it starts and stops with her. And she would just say, like, I'm it. I'm the only one That's who's exhausting. making these decisions. And I have yeah. to be I have to be the mom. I have to be the dad. I have to be the disciplinarian. I have to be the celebrator. I have to be everything. And... um. And look, you know, I don't, I don't get it. Even after 72 hours of having to field many text <laughs> messages from our children, I, I will never get it. But I have such a, such a huge amount of respect and respect and admiration for people who are single parents, because it does, it's a, it's a lot. That's, it's a lot. Yeah. So I'm glad Alan's better. <laughs> it was very <laughs> inconvenient. <laughs> and who was going to unload the dishwasher? Exactly. Let's get it real. Exactly. I was very clear about it. I said, I can do those things. I can do laundry. I can wash dishes. I'm just not particularly good at those things. So that's just, you know, being honest. <laughs> so... <laughs> I know. So this is this is the episode about controversies, like ridiculous controversies, I'm going to say, because this next topic is is there's been a heated debate 
over social media. I don't know if it has come to your world, which is outside of social media, unlike mine, but it is the whole thing around having to show your receipt when you exit a Walmart. People oh, yeah. are really upset about this. Okay. And Aaron, I started talking to him about this because I was watching videos. I've got into the Walmart receipt algorithm on TikTok. And so then I started asking him about it. And he said that, and, and I was like, do people have to show it? Like, is there legality? And what did he said? There's a, there's like a, um, there's a whole uh, legal term for it. I forget what it's called, but I'm like, wait, we should turn this into a video. So he made a video for his work account, 50,000 views later. No way. <laughs> and a lot of comments. People have opinions about this whole Walmart receipt thing. about having, And people are pissed because they are checking themselves out. They are now the cashier, right? There's not even an option sometimes to use a cashier. And, then, and there's a person there staring at you while you're checking your groceries out. And then they want to see your receipt. And people are like... If you trust me to do this unpaid job, and then you're also accusing me of stealing, that that is people like are offended and annoyed, and they have videos of people recording themselves not showing their receipt, and then cops coming, right? So, what is your opinion on it? So, number one is it's not a matter of trust; it's a matter of trust but verify. And I think the self checkout to me is I, I like it. I think it's it's a plus that I can do everything. I can I can expedite things. I don't think of it as oh you're making me do this. I I think of it as a thank you for allowing me to check myself out. However, I have been told by um, sources within the retail industry that those self checkout lines, whether it be at the grocery store, Walmart, Target, you name it. Are, are known for being the free item line, right? Where mm. people will scan one thing and throw yes. three things in the bag, okay? Yeah. So there is, unlike when you have somebody checking you out, you do have the liberty to take things without scanning it, right? It's just, you know, it's one of those things. And people, you know, I think intentionally do that. I'm wondering how, and, and I've noticed that the Walmart, they check your receipt, but not always. Like sometimes I'll have a giant item that can't be bagged. So they'll check my receipt just to make sure I'm not walking out with the cart. And I'm fine to do it because I'm a loyal Costco shopper. And at Costco, you literally cannot leave the store without them checking, counting how many items you have, and then looking. And look, I, what you know, what am, what am I going to do? Are, are they checking me or are they checking the checkout people? Yes, to make sure I appreciate it. I like the Costco checkout. Because you're spending some funds there, right? Yeah. I go once a quarter, so I'm investing in whatever I'm buying. <laughs> and here's what I'm wondering. I haven't been to Sam. I haven't had a Sam's membership in a long time. And as you know, Sam's and Walmart are the same parent company. Um, I'm wondering if like Costco does that checkout thing, if Sam's also does it. And now this is just like a repercussion from that or it's 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 you know has is now like seeped into the walmart right. culture because of the sam's community i don't I know think, i think it's different and i think because people had this discussion on aaron's comments right i think costco and sam's is different because you have to apply and become a member to join this store right, right? and people are used to that it's always been part of that i think at walmart they're really making sure you paid for everything. Yeah. Not making sure, you know, and if you didn't, if for some reason you did, you thought you scanned something and you didn't, they would probably, you know, accuse you of shoplifting. I've seen that happen to people, right? One time I almost walked out of Kroger and forgot I had a watermelon in the bottom of, of my basket. And I saw it right before we pulled it out of self-checkout and I scanned it and paid for it. But if I had done that at Walmart, what would have happened, Right. One, there's a Kroger near us, and um, this it's like not well kept Kroger, right? It's in a little sketchy area, and I did self checkout. Oscar and I are walking out. There's this woman at the exit with a remote. She presses the button, and all of a sudden, my cart stops. Like I can't even push it. <laughs> and That's and we <laughs> and she's like cool. and she. And she looked uh, so accusatory. It was awful. And she goes, I need to see your receipt. And I was like, okay. And it was like made my heart race, you know? And I was like, oh my God, what if I forgot to scan something, right? They, w in that case, definitely want to call the cops on me, yeah. right? This is one of those places where I think people do that all the time. And Oscar was pushing the cart. So she probably thought, oh, she's getting her kid to push this cart. So it looks all innocent, right? 
So I don't know. I don't. I think it's. I think they're a little suspicious. That being said, most of the time, it's some um, eighty-year-old friendly old lady who's like, "Hi, sugar. Okay, you're good." And they exactly. and they wave you through. This woman, her name is Precious, literally. And she now she knows me, and she doesn't even. She's like, she's like, does the go ahead, go ahead. You you yep. don't need to stop. So here's here's what I would say. This is the price of of shopping these days mm-hmm. because of social media and because of. Um, the phones and you can immediately record somebody, put them on, on social media or tag them without them even knowing or having their permission. Um, people are doing the opposite. They're going into stores, honestly, and they are shoplifting. And then they're basically threatening the employees saying, oh, you're going to, you're going to try to call the police or this. I have you on video and I'm going to come find you. I mean, it's, it's, and look, that isn't rampant. It's but harassment. Those are, yeah. yeah. Those are anecdotal, you know, um, incidents that are happening across the country. Yeah. So if a Walmart or if any store wants to see my receipt because I've done self-checkout, because that's, that's an added thing. They, Walmart used to not even have self-checkout, I think until COVID really, it became really prominent. Mm-hmm. But I do, I do the opposite. Instead of like waiting for somebody, I, I do like Costco. I have my receipt visible. I hold it up. If they want to check it, if they want to check my items, I'm fine to do it. I yeah. think it's the same thing of when you turn 21 and you're ordering a drink at a bar, right? right? Before you're 21, you're nervous. You hope they don't ask for your ID. You get very defensive. What do you mean? Once you're 21 or older, you're like Don't throwing care. that idea out. Like even in Tennessee, they have to card me no matter how old I look. And so I'm constantly giving my ID because guess what? I am 21. And if they have to see my ID in order to serve me, even though I look twice <laughs> as old as someone, right. and I am twice, more than twice as old as someone who can legally drink, I'm okay with that because it's not a reflection on me. It's just the rules they've implemented because obviously there are people who break those rules. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a rule follower, I'm happy to follow the rules. So just show them, like, stop complaining. Go do your self-checkout, save your money, show your receipt to the poor person earning like $5 an hour right. and go on your merry way. Yeah. Right. We have other things to worry about. I'm telling you, there are much bigger issues in the world than whether or not Walmart wants to check your stupid receipt. So I think it's funny that not you, see, you and I'm not yelling right. at you. I'm saying to, are you to, people, yelling at me? <laughs> to the 50,000 people who are watching Aaron's video and then commenting on it. Well, I think it's funny that you think the self-checkout is like a, a, benefit it is like they they are not hiring enough people to run the checkout lines that's what it is that's what's happening but um I think it's both I think it's a both and I think people are doing it number one when they didn't want to talk to anybody or or you know see anybody it expedites the line because especially if I have one item oh my gosh I was at the grocery the other day and I had a giant cartload of things I like to do self-checkout but I had a giant thing so I went to the normal thing this woman's behind me with one item and I almost said, you know, there's like Go the devil, me. Yeah. the devil and the, and the angel. No, yeah. the devil in me wanted to be like, really? You see that I've got this giant cart. I've already got it half unloaded onto the conveyor belt. And there's a whole like six checkout, self checkout line. You could be done in two seconds. And then I thought, well, I don't know her story. I don't know if she's comfortable doing that or if she's paying with cash and it gets complicated. So I just said, you only have that one little item. You go in front of me. And she was so happy. And she went. So I'm really, I try, you know, I, my tendency is sometimes to, my default is to get annoyed at first, but I try not to go with that first instinct. (laughs) I try to wait out that instinct and then show grace and then act accordingly. So I'm glad I stop myself a lot of times. I think it's more of a parenting instinct, right? You're like, I need to educate this person. (laughs) Right. They don't, (laughs) they just don't know the right way to do it. I need to show them. Do I need to parent you right now, even though you're older than me? Is that what's happening? Yeah, exactly. All right. So since we're going down that, that lane of controversial, this may be controversial. What's up with trigger warnings? (sighs) Is this like, <laughs> I need a trigger warning for trigger warnings. Thank you. Thank you. And if I hear this once, I hear it a hundred times from my kids and their, their friends, right? That they are almost like demanding mm-hmm. and expecting trigger warnings with everything. And I tried to have a conversation with Arthur, especially because we had this whole discussion about different trigger warnings in different situations. And I finally said, look, I understand where you're coming from, and I also think because it's gotten so out of hand that you want to be warned about everything. We were warned about nothing. We watched movies. We engaged in conversations. We learned from, you know, history books and and read things that that gave us no forewarning. And I think part of being 
you know, horrified by tragedies or traumas or historical events has to be part of the learning process, right? And it makes you, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not learning. And I said to him, I go, the whole, the, your whole argument of needing a trigger warning is what people use as the argument against critical race theory, right? Like, oh, we shouldn't learn this because it's traumatizing. It's yeah. Right. It's triggering. And look, I, there are extremes. There are, I, I do believe that people have suffered from traumas. And if you're unaware and you bring up something that can be you know, a trigger for them in terms of their emotional state, that's not a healthy place to be. Right. And putting that aside, right. Yeah. For, and I understand mental illness and all of that. Like that's a different category. I'm talking about the daily expectation for trigger warnings in everything, literature, movies, arts, theater, radio, MTV. Does MTV still exist? I you know what know. I'm saying? I don't all think it does. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. <laughs> right. I mean, I just can't do it anymore. Does that make me insensitive? No, I think it's, I, I think some people would say yes, that it does <laughs> make you insensitive, right? right? There are some people are listening being like, this is offensive. Right. This trigger is warning. This podcast has no trigger warning. We right. just talk. <laughs> I do think that it's like, how are you going to be prepared to go out into the world if you're always expecting a trigger warning for things because you're going to be in situations where there are no trigger warnings. Something upsetting is being talked about suddenly. And if you're not prepared to handle those situations because you've not experienced that situation because you're always being warned, then how are you going to just enter the world? Right. And there is part of the world who they do trigger warnings. And then there's the other half who that's just not part of their daily vernacular. Right. But I think universities and corporations when, and businesses, when they're hiring this, it's become a part of how they do business now right. and how they run their universities to appeal to this generation. We didn't have that, which was, right. which is so why it makes it so annoying. <laughs> I, I don't, okay that we didn't have it, but I also feel like, I, I can't even remember if I mentioned this on the podcast before, but when I was at Cartoon Network, HR did this whole entire presentation on millennials and which I know you think I'm a millennial, but they did this whole presentation on millennials and, and how to keep them as employees and make them happy and how they expect that they kept on calling them the, um, the level up generation, right? Cause they're used to gaming and being able to, you know, get, get to the next level quickly. Right. If they do, if they collect enough points, level Level one done. Next, right? Level yeah. Two done. Next. So they want they want the bigger titles. They wanted to get promotions quicker, and they talked about doing that. And I'm like, we didn't. We would have to like work in positions for years that were above our pay grade, or you know, and and, and work as a manager, even though we were a coordinator, to just prove that we were a manager, right? And now they're like at a college, and they're like, "Hi, you're director of marketing," right? Well, titles, you're, the C, you're the CEO. Titles don't mean anything anymore. No, they just no. don't. Because I look, I always get, I'm always, you know, interested in what opportunities are out there. And all of, like the director of marketing positions are like um, two to three years experience. <laughs> and I'm like, back in my day, it was 15 years right. of experience. And please stay for six months. Please stay for at least six months, maybe eight. Yeah. <laughs> we just want you a little bit. Now Here's the, only, the only trigger warning we had growing up, as far as I can remember, is when you would walk into a place and there would be strobe lighting and they would say, if you are prone to seizures, you shouldn't come to this space or watch this movie because the strobe lighting will affect you. Now, yeah. that's an important trigger warning it because is. that triggers something that can impair you or harm you physically. Right. If there's a trigger warning you. that can uh, right, if that can harm you physically, mentally, I get that. But what I am annoyed about is that people expect me to give a trigger warning or expect others to give a trigger warning in anticipation that that they might have one of a thousand different traumas or triggers to that trauma. And that's really hard to do. It's really hard to have a conversation or to suggest um, a book, a film, 
a, a Netflix show, right? Or even like a place to visit and then say, but trigger warning, if you suffer, right? It feels like those medicine commercials where it's like, do not use if you have, and then right. the guy's talking really fast and you don't understand a word he's saying. All the symptoms that you can, right. all the, not the symptoms, but the uh, side effects. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to be the side effect spokesperson. May cause discomfort, to... <laughs> diarrhea, <laughs> possibly death. Possibly nausea. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Like every story, you know, I showed Arthur um, E.T. when he was really little, I guess too little, but I always loved E.T. And I just remember he was maybe five or six and we were sitting in like the little playroom and he started watching it and he started slowly backing up and backing up and backing up. And to this day, he blames me <laughs> for traumatizing him with E.T. I don't think he's ever seen E.T. since then because well, he thinks about his five-year-old self. Okay. okay? So Tr- by hold the- on. Trigger warning, Arthur. I'm talking about E.T. <laughs> So, by the way, that would be hard to predict because I was afraid of everything and I right. loved E.T., right? <laughs> like E.T. But I do feel like mommy and daddy did traumatize me with gremlins and they did the opposite of a trigger warning. They were like, they didn't tell me it was a scary movie. All They, they just pitched Gizmo to me. They were just like, oh, this movie's about Gizmo. He's like E.T., Right, and this movie is not about Gizmo. It's not. <laughs> that is, let's be real, and that is so trauma. And I was traumatized. Would I have been less traumatized if they had told me that uh, if they showed me a picture of Spike? I probably would not have even gone into that movie theater. Right, but that's why there's ratings on things, exactly. and that's and that's why they're trailers. And I didn't get to see the trailer. <laughs> but you can even tell how we have changed as a society because the things that were rated PG or even PG thirteen when we were growing up would be rated, you know, R today, right? You can't you can't get away with anything, which I'm not saying is necessarily bad or good. I think there's probably a lot more nudity or scenes, you know, vacation and um, the, some of the John Hughes movies. There, there are things that we took for granted, just like, all right, that's life. But now we've made it a big deal. And so now it's like everything has, you know, everything is shocking and nothing is shocking. Well, it's like probably why, you know, mommy and daddy never restricted us with movies. Like I would have friends over and they're like, oh, I'm not allowed to watch a PG-13 movie. Right. Like they never did that. They were never like, you can't go see this. You can't watch this, which is why I was showing that stuff to my kids when they were five (laughs) and they probably shouldn't have, you know, and then as an adult, you're watching it. You're like, oh my God, it's not just sexual innuendo. It is sex. There is sex happening. There are boobs there is full frontal nudity in what i thought was a family movie <laughs> yeah i think the boys watched vacation at mom and dad's house once because i think it came on one thanksgiving and we were flipping through and they're like don't stop on that movie you can see somebody's boobies all the way <laughs> i'm like how do you know that they're like oh nini let us watch it when we stayed here you know two months ago i look at mommy and she's like I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe. It was on. Well, that's yeah. like, it's. I mean, mom and dad probably have feelings about us and think we have our own version of trigger warning, right? Because they <laughs> were always blasting CNN. And yeah. when the, I'm okay with it now, but when the kids were little, I was like, can we not have on the news? It is like death and sadness and scary things. And they right. were like, Ugh. No. They, to this day, dad still rolls his eyes at me. He's like, oh, CNN is on. Are you okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I'm okay with it because my children are in high school. <laughs> right. They're not in preschool. So we, we good. We yeah. good. And I'm I, not saying that we should show our children or grandchildren or whoever, I mean, porn or inappropriate or, or things that are not age appropriate, right? But it's also, there's got to be a happy medium between uh, ensuring that we and our children and others experience a level of discomfort for the sake of learning. Because if no one is ever uncomfortable in any situation, they stay in their little little bubble, right, of mm-hmm. understanding and knowledge, and they never experience the world around them. And that's, you know, either side of that spectrum is very, very dangerous. That being said, I would like a trigger warning when restaurants think a, a chicken without bones is chicken wings. <laughs> And, and trigger warning, you're going to have to show your receipt at Walmart. Just be prepared, <laughs> be prepared p- people. It's just going to happen. Well, thanks for listening to the latest Sis and Tell podcast. Don't forget to share us with your friends, share us with your family, share us with your foes. As always, this has been Amanda and Allison with a whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>